The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Jesus the Christ said, I am the good shepherd. We gather in the name of the one who knows us and loves us. We gather in the name of the one who laid down his life for us. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Lord God, our good and loving shepherd, you nourish our lives and lead us in green pastures. You restore our souls with rest and peace. You give us true joy, so our cup overflows with goodness. You walk with us through the darkest valleys, offering us courage and compassion. At all times and in all circumstances, you are with us, creator, redeemer, and guiding spirit. So we praise you, Holy One, now and always. Amen. confession let us pray patient God your mercy is abundant and your love endless trusting in your mercy we confess that often we have not shown your love to others even though we claim it for ourselves you have called us to show compassion but too often we are quick to judge others we have been called to follow Jesus, yet we are distracted by our own plans and desires. Forgive us 
for failing, falling short of your hopes for us, and renew a right spirit within us. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for us. Open your hearts to the Good Shepherd and know that your sins are forgiven. A reading from the book of Acts. Hear the word of God. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who, has, who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This is Jesus, the stone that was rejected by you. The builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of John. Hear the word of God. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him wherever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of John, hear the word of God. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In one of my uh, former congregations, a farmer once told me that he didn't think it was very flattering for Jesus to refer to his followers as sheep. For sheep are rather stupid animals, he said. If one of them heads to the river to drown, the rest will all follow. Well, I suppose he's right. It isn't flattering to be referred to as a sheep. Yet it's not exactly flattering for Jesus to refer to himself as a shepherd either. In Jesus' day, the job of shepherd was one that was usually taken up by people who couldn't find any other job. For it was a 24-hour, seven days a week job, spent completely outdoors, deprived of the comforts of a home. Shepherds were people who had little facility for personal hygiene. They probably smelled. It was often people with a criminal record or marginalized people who signed up for this kind of job. That Jesus, the Son of God, would describe himself as a shepherd testifies to his unwavering solidarity with all people, regardless of their background. There were qualities in both sheep and shepherd, however, that led Jesus to choose this metaphor for the Christian life. Sheep are good at following, and Jesus' desire is that we follow him. Shepherds had to be very good at protecting sheep, and that's the quality that Jesus wished to emphasize in us. To emphasize in himself, that is. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus says of himself, I am the good shepherd. And what did Jesus mean when he referred to himself as the good shepherd? First, when Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, he was actually saying that he was the Messiah. The Old Testament books of Ezekiel and Isaiah foretell of the Messiah who would, like a true shepherd, lead his flock and gather his lambs in his arms. And of course, Handel's Messiah immortalized this prophecy in the aria, he shall feed his flock. When Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he was saying that he was the fulfillment of this Old Testament prophecy. For as a Jew, he'd be familiar with the prophecy and understand the weighty claim that he was making when he said, I am the good shepherd. Second, when Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, he meant something in particular about the word good. Now, good is a word that we often use to refer to a whole host of things, but Jesus meant something particular by the word good. And the Greek word that is translated as good here describes everything that is noble, wholesome, and beautiful. 
That is, it describes the character of God. He alone is truly good. Remember the man that came up to Jesus and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, Jesus got the impression that the man was trying to flatter him or ingratiate himself with him, so he replied, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Jesus wanted to make it clear to this man that true goodness comes only from God. And thus when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he was saying that the goodness that comes from God alone lives in him. Therefore, when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he was making a very bold claim. He was saying that he was the Messiah of which the Old Testament prophesied and that the goodness that comes only from God lives in him. Third, when Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, he was saying that he protects. A shepherd protected his flock 24-7. He stayed near his sheep in the field by day, protecting them from wolves and robbers. At night, he would gather the sheep into a sheepfold for protection. And the sheepfold was either a pen or a cave or an area backed by a stone wall. Since there was no door on the sheepfold, the shepherd would sit or sleep in the opening, ready to guard the sheep from harm. And this is what Jesus meant when he said in John chapter 10, I am the door, or as some translations say, I am the gate. Jesus was saying, just as a shepherd is so dedicated to protecting his sheep that he even makes himself a human door, I am the door because I am always protecting you. Now sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that this notion of protection is that Jesus is saying that he's going to keep us from all harm. Is that maybe why Psalm 23 is so popular? We interpret it to mean that God protects all people from harm. Well, obviously, God doesn't do that. The sufferings of this world befall believers equally as they befall non-believers. What Jesus meant by protecting was not that no harm would ever befall us. What he meant is that our salvation is secure in him. If we follow him, sin will never destroy us, and eternal life is a gift that will never be taken from us. We fall into the trap of misinterpreting Jesus' words if we do not begin with the understanding that for Jesus, the most important thing in this world and in the world to come is our relationship with God. To have a right relationship with God trumps everything else. The safety and comforts of this world must always take second place to our relationship with God. And to have a right relationship with God, we have to find a solution to sin. For sin creates a barrier between us and God. It prevents us from having a good relationship with him. Jesus came to earth as a solution for our sins. That is, to take the punishment for it upon himself and thus make our salvation secure. Therefore, the thing that Jesus protects us from is the devastation of sin. Fourth, when Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, he also meant that he lays down his life for us. Now, there was an element of danger in the shepherd's job. He was charged with protecting the sheep from robbers, and robbers would probably have weapons. So therefore, robbers presented a real danger to the shepherd. The shepherd also had to protect the sheep from wolves, and hungry wolves also presented an element of danger. There was a sense in which a shepherd risked his life for his sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd in the sense that he not only risked his life for us, but he laid it down for us. 
And Jesus laid his life down for us, not to protect us from the sufferings of the world, but to protect us from the punishment we deserve for our sin. Fifth, when Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, he meant that he also guides. A shepherd had to lead, that is, guide his sheep from one pasture to another looking for green grass. He also had to guide them to the river to drink. And in guiding them, he had to make sure that none of them went astray or got off course. In a similar way, Jesus guides us through life. He asks us to follow him. And what he meant by following him was to live as he lived, to do as he did. Sometimes we mistake being a Christian for giving assent to a certain set of doctrines. And every denomination of the church has its own doctrines, and each denomination believes that their doctrines are superior to some other denomination. Being a Christian is not essentially assent to doctrines, but it's following. Our faith is in following Jesus. When Jesus said, follow me, do you think that he meant believe the following 10 doctrinal statements about me? No, what he meant was to live as I live, to do as I do. And in trying to live as Jesus lived, we discover the truth of what he said, and we find faith. Faith comes from experiencing the life that Jesus called us to live, more so than giving assent to particular doctrines. Faith comes from our daily efforts to live as Jesus lived. And Jesus guides us like a shepherd guides his sheep by showing us how to live, by showing us the path to follow. That is the way to live our life. And he also promises us to give us the strength and the courage to live this life. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. We'll never find someone who loves us more, protects us as much, or guides us as faithfully as Jesus the Good Shepherd. To be a member of his flock is to be a member, is to be a member of a group like no other. It's a privilege, a blessing, and a joy to be included in his flock. Amen.
the prayer of thanksgiving, let us pray. We give you thanks, great God, for the hope we have in Jesus, who died but is risen to be our good shepherd, whose love for us is unmatched, whose care for us is like no others. Our hearts are filled with gratitude that we have a savior such as Jesus Christ. Because he lives, we look forward to eternal life, knowing that nothing past, present, nor yet to come can separate us from your great love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray for the needs of your world. Following the example of the shepherd who searched for the lost sheep, we pray for the lost in our community. Help us to seek them out and welcome them in our midst. Conscious of the Good Shepherd's voice, may we speak God's word of reconciliation and peace to all we meet. Remembering the Good Shepherd who gave up his life for his sheep, we pray for those who work at low pay for the service of others, for frontline workers who put themselves at risk during this pandemic to help us, and for those who make sacrifices for us of which we are unaware. Remembering the Good Shepherd who leads us beside still waters, may we raise up leaders in the church and in the world who lead us in ways of peace. The hired hand runs away, but the Good Shepherd protects his sheep. Grant us the wisdom to distinguish between false teachers and true teachers of the word. The Good Shepherd desires one flock under one shepherd. Lead us toward greater unity in the church, a unity born of love for one another. Now hear us as we pray in the words that the Good Shepherd taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>